This legendary rock band was riding high in the 70s, taking over radio, selling out stadiums. Then they entered the 80s and they hit a wall. In fact, the band thought their career was over. They went years without a hit. And just when they thought they'd peaked, they pulled out one of the greatest comebacks of the era, the number one album and two number one hits in a row, including their biggest hit ever, which included a vocal performance for the ages. Coming up, we have the story from the band's legendary lead singer about this explosive vocal, blew everybody away and gave them a number one smash. Coming up on Professor Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists, greatest songs of all time. If you love music, you're gonna to wanna to subscribe below to be a part of this community where you'll get daily content celebrating the best of the rock era. Uh, for more content, behind the scenes footage, check us out on Patreon. I'm pumped to bring you another episode from our series, Revelations. It's probably my favorite show we do on here because featured artists reveal uh, some rare stories about their biggest songs. You get really cool insight about their careers that you won't find elsewhere. In 1987, the band Heart released Bad Animals. It uh, contained their biggest hit ever, Alone. That went to number one for a month, and it was the second biggest hit of the year. This came after they had their first number one album, their self-titled Heart album that came out in 85. It's a welcome reprieve from the years that Heart thought they were done as a band, as you'll see in the, the interview coming up. Several years earlier, sisters Anne and Nancy Wilson, the voice and guitar respectively of this Hall of Fame group, they were pushing through one of the most treacherous times of their career. After taking the world by storm in the mid 70s with the albums Dreamboat Annie, that Little Queen and Dog and Butterfly. The band entered the 80s with the rock and Baby Lestrange. That went to the top five on the album charts, while the lead single from that album, Even It Up, peaked at number 33 on the Hot 100. But from there on out, the next few studio albums, they sold less and less. The band was in the midst of a pretty big slump with 1982's Private Edition and 1983's uh, Passion Works falling short, well short of commercial expectations. And the singles from those records languished outside of the top 20. Uh, with the advent of MTV and the popularity of the synthesizer uh, inside the neon decade, the suits at the label started to push rockers Ann and Nancy into a bit of a new direction. Up to that point, Ann and Nancy had written the majority of their output. But at this point, they were pushed to record outside writers' music, as well as collaborate with many of these writers. This resulted in immediate commercial success. 1985 Heart's self-titled LP went to number one, their only album up to that point to do so. The album contained four top 10 hits, including the number one smash of These Dreams. I live another life, these, dreams. these Dreams, of course, written by legendary uh, Elton John lyricist Bernie Toppin and number one songwriter Martin Page. This led to the release of Bad Animals, which continued that commercial success. Alone from the album has since become one of the most popular songs ever. Alone. It's been covered by everybody from Celine Dion to Carrie Underwood, but it was actually recorded and released twice before Ann Wilson and Hart got a hold of it. First time was by the song's actual writers. Uh, Songwriters Hall of Fame team of Billy Steinberg and Tom Kelly, who actually had four other number one hits in the 80s, including Like a Virgin for Madonna, True Colors by Cyndi Lauper, So Emotional by Whitney Houston, and Eternal Flame by The Bangles. Steinberg and Kelly recorded under the name I-10 on their 1983 album, Taking a Cold Look. A 
Then it was recorded by actress Valerie Stevenson and actor John Stamos, of Full House fame, on the original soundtrack of the lost CBS sitcom Dreams. That happened in 1984. It's released as a single. When Hart recorded it for Bad Animals a few years later, became a whole other animal altogether, beginning with a soft piano figure with a subdued Ann Wilson vocal. I hear the ticking of the clock. That exploded in the hard rock chorus with one of Ann Wilson's greatest moments as a singer, belting out an otherworldly scream. She's gonna tell us the secret of that moment coming up next. Besides being their biggest chart hit in the U.S., it also was their most successful single in the United Kingdom. Alone peaked at number three on the U.K. singles chart in June of that year. It's the band's only song to peak inside the U.K. top five, actually. Uh, really, the song was a massive hit all over the world. It reached number one in Canada, the top five in Ireland, and Norway, and Switzerland, the top ten in Australia, Belgium, and the Netherlands. It also went to the top 20 in uh, West Germany. I had a great conversation with Ann Wilson Hart about this period in the 80s when they were struggling commercially up to the point of their success. As we go into this interview, I do want to thank your sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. I love this brand. I've been wearing them exclusively for two years. Uh, I'm a lifer now. They have an amazing variety at their website. You can design your own pair, then you just put in your prescription online and they deliver them right to your door. Very cost effective, especially in the times we live in. You can check it out at the link below zenny.com. Here's Ann Wilson with the story. What was happening in music is that music was really, really changing. There just weren't enough people out there who believed in the way we sounded. We were sounding antique at this point. We weren't changing with the or being ahead of the times. We weren't out there in front. And um, this was the moment where we thought, well, this is probably gonna be it. The excess of the 80s yeah. kind of came yeah. in. It's yeah. so interesting how things change so quickly in the music industry. Yeah, and sometimes it's slow and gradual and sometimes it's tsunami. In the 80s, it was kind of like a weird crystallization into um, phoniness. I mean, lots of people will hate me for saying that because they no. love the 80s. They love the whole thing. Well, I love it because that's when I grew up and I was discovering this music. Right, but yeah. MTV, I mean, was a big step in helping people from Idaho. I mean, I grew up in a small town in Idaho, yeah. so that was my window to the world, you know? Yeah. But I understand what you're saying, absolutely. And some of the music was gorgeous. The police, I mean, some amazing things came out of that era. But also some really inauthentic Excess. Bullshit came out of that. Yep. Excess. Like Nancy always says, the the type of drugs that were <laughs> popular then even got egocentric. Right. In the 70s, it was weed and acid and those drugs that uh, that worked against the ego, you know. Right. This is like, a, hey, whatever, man. When cocaine comes in and, yeah. the, and the icy drugs, everyone is just right. the coolest Oh yeah, thing on the face take of the earth. The world. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm I am the coolest. Um, yeah, so so that was a big a big change. I remember riding my my bicycle. I was 11 years old. I lived in Blackfoot, Idaho, a little small town, and they had this this market, and they would sell cassette tapes there. I remember riding my bicycle down there, and I remember buying Bad Animals the day it came out. Oh. Yeah. And alone, I mean, just yeah. one of your signature songs. It's an amazing song, and it's really a s simple, but it's um, it's kind of like uh, zipping open the zipper to your soul if you're gonna sing that song. You can't have anything in reserve. Tom and I wrote alone before we wrote Like a Virgin, and for whatever reason, the version of the song that went on the I-10 record, for me, was very kind of wooden. It just felt stiff and uninspired. I wonder where you are tonight. No answer. Tom Kelly and Billy Steinberg are really talented guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're 
they're some of the more talented songwriting teams I've ever seen. I don't know if they had the idea that it was for me to sing. I, I'm not sure about that. We got a phone call. They're looking for a power ballad for heart. So we made a new demo. It's essentially just a drum machine, Tom playing the piano and singing it. But he really nailed it. It's a great demo. And uh, Hart heard it and loved it, and that's the story. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a drama queen. You know, that, <laughs> that song was perfect for a drama queen. Yeah. It's, it's so theatrical. It still works live today. We brought it way down small live, but it doesn't matter if it's acoustic or if it's the big 80s overkill thing, you know, it's still, the song calls the shot. I hear Hart's version on the radio and I just feel like that's, you know, it holds up for me. I'm really happy with that song, proud of it. What I love is Ron Nevison, that you guys would sing Bad Medicine to Ron Nevison. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you were kind of butting heads, but he told you in that second verse, hey, let's delay for you to go into that second chorus. And you let out this heavenly scream. That's one of the greatest emotions ever put down on a pop album or a wow. pop record. <laughs> wow. You know, tell well, me about well, thank that you. moment. Musically, I think, the key that the song was in is here. The scream is is an octave up mm -hmm. from it. And emotionally, the song goes here and it goes up to here. So to me, it's very natural to go like, alone, ah, you know, or whatever key it's in. Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. have relative pitch, but um, emotionally, it just was one of those, those, I'm attached to this key, but I'm going to take it way up there. I'm feeling way more than 13 tones, at least an octave, you know, soul jump. It's nothing about being careful. It's about l letting everything out, you know? Absolutely. And it's one of those moments on a record where I remember as a kid, because you have the cassette, rewinding it and playing it again, rewinding it and yeah, playing yeah. it again. I mean, you probably remember taking records and listening right, to the parts yeah, again. Yeah. And just going, what was that? That power of music. Yeah. Been a lot of divas that have done it. Celine and, and Carrie Underwood, powerhouse voices. Because nobody touches Ann Wilson on that song for my money. Well, well thank yeah. you. Well, it's gotta be hard to sing other people's songs, but that was a song that, yes, those guys wrote it, but like Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. you made it your song. I mean, Frank Sinatra didn't write anything, and Elvis either, but for what Frank did so well was he made it his song, yeah. like he wrote it. And that's, that's right. how alone is with you, with your voice. Alone. For me, Easy Target was the song that I like most oh, about cool. that record. That was one of uh, the songs that Nancy and Sue Ennis and I wrote. We were still out there slogging, trying, you know, <laughs> right. still like being told no all the time, uh -huh. but, but still just trying. Pushing it. Yeah. Trying to rock. In fact, at one point, you know, we were writing all these ballads and everyone was going, you know what was telling us what people really like you about you the most is when you rock. Women who rock. <laughs> right. that, that had become the sound bite at at the time and it became real tiresome to us at a point we felt we had an obligation to rock right yeah because we're such divas <laughs> but <laughs> so well, easy somebody's telling you to do something i mean if you're a rocker you're going to rebel and want to do the opposite, exactly you know? like so no diva there like why did the democrat cross the road because somebody told him not to so yeah we were we were going like well we gotta rock and it's it's because I'm a woman, right? And so I have to rock. Right. So that makes us easy targets. You know, we were just like getting kind of prickly about everything. We we probably should have taken a vacation or something <laughs> along about this point. But no, 
But we didn't because we are songwriters. We got to the point in our thinking finally where it was, well, we may never have a number one hit, but what really turns us on is writing songs. So oh, we're yeah. going to do it. For those records, though, in the 80s, I mean, they really are some of the best examples of AOR rock at its finest. Yeah. And there was still AOR, so you could hear Easy Target. Hey, leave us a comment on this classic heart song. What do you think about that otherworldly vocal scream? What are your memories of the song and this album? Uh, what are your What's your favorite period of heart? The 70s, the 80s, even the 90s? Let's have a good discussion. Make sure to check out Anne's new album, Fierce Bliss, at the link below. It's really good. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe below. Make sure to do that. Hit the bell so you know when our videos are dropping. Also, make sure to join us on Patreon for even more content that helps us keep it a daily, daily channel. Help us keep the music alive. That's the idea. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Mm -hmm.